Hello, I'm Kate Freeman, and this is The Daily Dollop. On this episode of The Daily Dollop, I'm going to chat feeding toddlers the little rascals that they are. I'm going to chat about fussiness, what causes it, and my top tips for feeding them. Well, welcome back to the show, everybody. This is The Daily Dollop. I'm your host, Kate Freeman, a registered nutritionist and the founder of The Healthy Eating Hub. And fun fact about me is that I have a son and a few years ago, I had the great privilege to refresh the kids' menu of a local family restaurant here in Canberra. It's actually a local Canberra club and they have restaurants all over the north and south of Canberra. And I worked with them and the University of Canberra to refresh the kids' menu and we put on some super creative and healthy options apart from, you know, nuggets and chips onto their kids' menu. And I worked so hard on it. And I, it's one of the projects that I'm really, really proud of as part of my career. So we go to the uh, the launch of the new menu just for the VIPs. And so, of course, we're a special family. They get invited and hubby and my kids are there. And my son, Carter, I think he's four, five at the time. Little poop head orders bloody nuggets and chips off the menu. So there's this beautiful new menu like a tasting plate and make your own tacos and rice paper rolls and kebabs and he orders nuggets and chips anyway. Dang it, and I couldn't, I couldn't make him change his mind. So there you go. Look, hey, parenting, what can you do? I don't know. I'm lost. I just do my best and then when they're like big, I'm just like, you're on your own, kids. You're on your own. But look, while they're toddlers, hey, feeding them is super duper challenging. And in fact, I would argue that in the early years of parenting, your two biggest issues are sleeping and eating. I pretty much think that sums up parenting in the early years. And now that I do have a nearly teenager, parenting is certainly much more complicated than it was back then. But for those of you who are right in the thick of parenting toddlers, it is so not easy. They are crazy hard work and feeding them is really, really, really challenging. And, you know, I think before I get stuck into this episode, I just want to say that there is enough guilt around parenting. So I am not going to layer on more guilt here around feeding your kids. So please don't worry about that. But I think, golly, They make you feel guilty because you say no to them and they chuck an epic tantrum. And so then you feel bad because you're not letting them do something. But then you give them what they want, which is, you know, like a jam sandwich or a chicken nugget. And then you feel guilty that that wasn't healthy. And then you feel guilty because then you decide that you're going to be tough and you're like, nope, if you don't eat what I put in front of you, then you don't eat. And then you've then you feel guilty that you might be starving them. And it's just this really <laughs> challenging, guilt-filled time um, that is parenthood um, and motherhood for me. I've certainly battled with that over the years. And I think at the end of the day, you really need to remember that you love your kids, you're doing your best, and what's right for you and your family might not necessarily be right for another family, and that is okay. And you have to do what makes you feel comfortable. So certainly when it comes to sleeping and eating and the routines and habits that you establish in your household around those two things are going to be a big reflection of your parenting style and what you feel comfortable with. So you can take or leave what I talk about in today's episode around feeding toddlers because a lot of the way I fed my kids as they're little is highly connected to my parenting style. Um, However, one of the things that I've always been challenged with in my parenting, and I got this advice off a mother who, she was kind of like my second mother. I grew up with her. She has five kids, five. And I feel like, golly, you got that many. Yep, I'll listen to you. And she just sort of said, you know what? Every family is different, but what every parent should do is have a think about whether 
the outcomes of their parenting is what they're happy with. And if you're not happy with how things are happening in your family, then challenge yourself to change the way you're parenting so that you can get the outcome that you want. And that's always really sat with me when it comes to thinking about, you know, sleeping and eating in the early years and then, you know, navigating all the challenges that older kids bring as well. And certainly now that I have a 10 and a 12 year old from a sleeping and eating perspective, I'm reaping the benefits of being particularly consistent with the boundaries that I set around food and bedtime and things like that. So there, you know, if you have decided that you are going to put in some boundaries and, and, and work on this area, please know that if you are consistent, it will reap dividends into the future. So let's just get stuck into it. These are my top tips for feeding toddlers. The first tip, which is easier said than done, is removing stress. The, the, the single biggest problem when it comes to feeding your child in the moment is the fact that we lose our cool and we get stressed, we get angry, we get flustered, they're tantruming, they're screaming. The whole thing just becomes a debacle and you are not going to make any kind of progress or anything if you lose your cool. You have to remain calm. Stress is the single most destructive factor when it comes to feeding kids. And so if that's happening in your home, before you even start to tackle what to eat and when to eat and all the other things is just make a commitment within yourself with going, okay, I'm going to stay calm. The thing that's always fascinated me about being a parent is um, how their behavior offends me. I'm not like, oh, how could you act like that? Like, I don't know. I just get so upset by the way that they're acting. And I just have to remind myself, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm I'm 30 and you're two. Okay, great. Yep, I can keep my cool and you can lose it because you're two um, and I'm a grown up. So when it came to my son, who was my fussy one, every time we got angry, we literally went backwards. But every time I remained calm, kept meal times positive, that putting my effort into that was the, the turning point in the way his behavior changed around food. And so one of the, the biggest tips I have for you is, um, is, is saying when you call them up to dinner, my son used to have a tantrum when I'd be like, dinner time, like he's already tantruming. He doesn't even know what's for dinner. So I'd be like, Carter, you don't have to eat it, honey. But sitting up at the table is what Team Freeman, that's what we are, that's our family name, Team Freeman, the freebies. Team Freeman sits up to dinner at the table, that's what we do, but you don't have to eat it. So just come and sit up. And just that really calm response would make him go, okay, cool, I don't have to eat it. He come and sit up at the table with us and I diffuse it right from there. And if I remember to do that and I actually got into the habit of that, our meal times just changed for the better. The second thing is that you need to understand a toddler's appetite. So it's really challenging to put yourself into your toddler's shoes because our own personal experiences of appetite are so real for us. It's really hard to imagine how appetite could be any different. But the appetite of an adult is very different to the appetite of a toddler. They are fully energy need driven, which means that they are only going to eat when they're hungry and they'll stop eating when they're full and they will eat based on the energy that their body needs. So growth spurts, extra active days, they're gonna be more hungry than not going through a growth spurt or very sedentary, or if they're really sick, they will not eat very much at all. Behaviors like boredom eating, stress eating, um, eating because it's there, um, reward eating, that they're all learned behaviors that toddlers learn from us as adults, but they don't actually do any of those behaviors naturally. And so what we want to do is foster this lovely appetite management that a toddler has inbuilt into them and help them keep that long term in their life. So don't expect a toddler who's been snacking all afternoon to eat their dinner because they're likely not going to be hungry. Just like um, a toddler who has, you know, um, front loaded or back loaded their day with calories that is not going to eat at other points in the day. So I'll give you a quick story about my niece when she was about 15, 16 months old. 
I remember my sister saying, you know, Kate, she is just not eating like throughout the day. She eats her breakfast and then that's it, like nothing for the rest of the day. Like she tantrums when I put her in a high chair. I just don't know what's wrong. I can't get her to eat. She's just not interested. Anyway, one particular day I was looking after her for the day and I was all like, oh, yeah, Auntie Katie is going to get this kid eating. Anyway, sure enough, the kid didn't eat, not a speck at my house. Like I was so shocked. I'm like, how is this kid surviving? She didn't eat and my sister picked her up. I was like, no, she wouldn't eat for me either. Anyway, I just asked my sister, I was like, what does she eat for breakfast? Oh, my sister's like, oh, my gosh, amazing appetite at breakfast. She has a full bottle of formula four wheat bix and two pieces of toast. And I was just like, oh, whoa. So that's a lot of energy on a 16 month old. My niece was also really small and petite. So her body is little, her energy needs a little. I was like, okay, goal is to decrease. I want you to halve the bottle of formula, halve the wheat bix, omit the toast tomorrow morning and then let me know how you go. So. That's what she did the next morning. She halved the bottle, halved the wheat bix no toast for breakfast. And then at lunchtime, she texts me and she's like, oh, she's eating lunch. So she was hungry. So what was happening is, is she was just eating all this food at breakfast time. No need for her to eat because she's fully energy driven in her appetite for the rest of the day. Tip number three is one meal for the whole family, please. This is my policy. I am not an a la carte restaurant. My children cannot be like, oh, excuse me, mommy, um, I would like this, please, and or send meals back to the kitchen because they're not happy and then get another one. No, that does not happen. I cook one meal for everybody. The earlier and more consistent you can be with that policy in your home, the better it will be. You might have to cut things up, toddlerify it a bit, mash things or separate things on their plate, but it needs to be the same thing that everybody is eating. This is an important part of good inclusiveness within the family unit, good socialization for the child, and also means that what your food is their food, it's safe for them to eat. Um, keep working on that, that's really important. Number four is don't offer alternatives. So if your child is refusing to eat something that you've put in front of them, just make the assumption that they're not hungry and, and meal time and snack time is over and they can eat at the next time that you make food available to them. Because if you keep offering alternatives, every time they turn their nose up at food, they'll quickly learn that all they have to do is refuse and eventually you'll bring out their favorite yogurt or fruit or something mm. or a glass of milk because you will think, oh gosh, they have to eat something. But really they're just playing you a little bit and their refusal of food is eventually getting them what they want to eat. So just go, I used to go, great, you don't want to eat that, that's fine, no problem. I never forced my kids to eat, but I never offered an alternative. So I knew that if they were hungry, they would eat it, and they knew that there wasn't going to be any other option. If they were hungry, they either ate what was put in front of them or they didn't eat, they had to wait. So that then created this environment where they ate when they're hungry, they didn't eat when they weren't hungry. Happy days. Number five is removing distractions. So turn off the TV, put smartphones away. This is really important. Help your child focus on the meal at hand. Really small toddlers ideally should be restrained in a high chair. The walking around and ah, they just get distracted. Get them up, take distractions away, let them focus on the meal at hand. You'll get much better eaters that way. I even encourage adults to do that. Um, and lastly is just be consistent with your routine. That's point number six. Consistency and routine is a key part of toddlers' days. They love consistency and routine. It helps them predict what's coming next, makes them feel safe and secure. Your consistency with these boundaries and these tips around food will be a key part of helping them actually change their eating habits for the better. Look, guys. Feeding toddlers is super, super challenging. These tips are for healthy toddlers. If your toddler you suspect has an underlying condition or medical um, reason that might mean that their fussiness is a, is a symptom of that, you really need to go and seek help from a qualified accrediting practicing dietitian. I actually have a pediatric dietitian on my team who's fabulous and can do telehealth consultations if you need help. So reach out to me if you need some help there. But 
certainly um, that individualized advice in helping come alongside you and support you and be on your team to help you feed your child long term is so, so, so valuable. So don't underestimate finding the right health practitioner to support you and your family. Otherwise, have fun feeding your kids, guys. Don't ask your toddler if they want squares or triangles. Just bloody give them what you want to give them and then you move on with your day. We'll see you later, team.